All right, in this scene, we're going to talk about fetal circulation. We're going to take a look at what the circulation in the fetus looks like right before it's born. So let's take a look down here. Here we have a simplified view of the circulation inside the baby. Here we have the placenta, where mommy's blood and baby's blood mix. This is essentially where the baby's blood gets oxygenated in order to provide oxygen for the baby. Here we have the liver, and here we have the heart. Here we have the umbilical vein. And the umbilical vein travels towards the liver area, where it joins with the hepatic vein. We don't want all the blood to go to the liver. Because why should we waste so much oxygenated blood just on the liver? Instead, we have a bypass, and this is known as the ductus venosus. We'll see at the end how to remember that. We have the ductus venosus over here in black. It's not really black, I just made it in black to make it easier to visualize. The oxygenated blood in the ductus venosus joins with the inferior vena cava over here. The inferior vena cava, of course, is deoxygenated as it brings deoxygenated blood from the legs and the feet. And so what happens is the ductus venosus and the inferior vena cava come together. The oxygenated blood from the ductus venosus and the deoxygenated blood from the inferior vena cava mix. And there we have mixed blood in the inferior vena cava. And it goes into the right atrium. We also notice that the superior vena cava also brings deoxygenated blood, completely deoxygenated blood, and thus it is blue to the right atrium. So this is our first shunt, the ductus venosus. Let's talk about the second shunt. So here we have the heart, and normally, in an adult, blood travels from the right atrium to the right ventricle. In the fetus, it does this as well. But this is kind of counterproductive, because what's the point of bringing blood to the right ventricle just for it to go to the lungs? The lungs are filled with water and can't do anything really for the baby. So instead, pressure builds up on the right side of the heart, as it can't make it to the constricted arterioles in the lungs. And it gets shunted through this foramen ovale, which we don't see over here because of the cross-section, but we see an arrow, where blood is taken from the right atrium to the left atrium. There's a hole. Now, blood can travel from the right atrium to the left atrium to the left ventricle and from there to the baby's body. So that's the second shunt, where blood travels through the foramen ovale to allow blood to travel from the right atrium to the left atrium. Now let's talk about the third one. So here we see the pulmonary artery. In the fetus, there's a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. This allows blood to travel from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. And we want this to happen because as we mentioned, the blood in the right ventricle is oxygenated. So if we get that blood into the aorta, it could actually provide oxygenated blood to the body. This shunt, which allows blood to travel from the pulmonary artery to the aorta, is known as the ductus arteriosus. Here we have the aorta, where blood travels to the baby's body. And we also see the umbilical arteries coming off of the internal iliac artery. So just to review, we have the three shunts. We have the ductus venosus, which acts as a shortcut to carry blood from the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. We have the foramen ovale, which allows blood to be shunted from the right atrium to the left atrium. And we have, and we have the ductus arteriosus, which allows blood to be shunted from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Okay, now let's come up with a fun way to remember this. So here we have a duck with a V nose. It nose looks kind of like a V. The duck with the V nose for ductus venosus. This is going to help us remember that the vessel which brings blood from the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava is known as the ductus venosus. Now let's move on to the next one. Over here we note these four men over here in veils. Four men in veils going from the right atrium to the left atrium. Four men in veils for foramen ovale. Okay, let's move on to the third one. Again, here we had the ductus arteriosus, which brought blood from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. We can imagine a duck over here who loves arteries. He's such a big artery fan that he paints himself red. He even puts hearts on himself. The duck who loves arteries for ductus arteriosus. This reminds us that the ductus arteriosus is what brings blood from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. So one more time to review, we had the ductus with the V nose for ductus venosus, we had four men in veils for foramen ovale, and we have the duck who loves arteries for ductus arteriosus. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene. Take care.